Hey, do you need some help setting goals and figuring out a plan to make this year your best year yet? Listen, I've got you. Go to christywright.com slash goals to download my free goal setting guide. I'm going to ask you a few simple but powerful questions that are going to help you know what's going on right now so you can set goals that are right right now. Go to christywright.com slash goals to get your free goal setting guide today. That's christywright.com slash goals today. Hey everyone, and welcome to Get Your Hopes Up. I'm Christy Wright, and I'm so glad you're here. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with hope by power of the Holy Spirit. Our God is the God of hope, and He wants you to overflow with hope. So let's start our week by getting our hopes up again. Today we're talking about obedience, and this tends to be a topic I talk about a lot because I don't know, y'all, maybe because it's really hard for me. It's a lesson I got to learn again and again and again. Now, if you've been listening to this show for a while, then you may remember me sharing a story last year about going for a run and God told me to do something that I didn't want to do. So in case you missed that episode or maybe you forgot, let me give you a quick recap, okay? So last year in 2023, when I was on this crazy wild ride journey with the Lord about moving, which has yet to be finished, by the way, But as this is going on and the Lord is taking me through all these different tests and different faith walks and so on, during this time on one particular day, I went for a run. Well, I went out for this run and I was training for a race at the time. And so I think I was doing about, I don't know, six or seven miles or so. Well, I got my headphones in the car and my AirPods were low battery. And so I couldn't take them with me. So I was like, that's fine. I'll just pray. I'll just pray on my run and just talk to the Lord about all these things going on. So I'm running and the park that I'm running in, the length around one lap around the track was almost a mile. So I was going to do, you know, six or seven laps or so. Well, around lap three or four, I'm praying and I am just telling God all the desires of my heart. I'm like, Lord, I want to be a person that obeys. I love you, Lord. Like, I just want your will. I do. I want your will. I want your plans for me. Whatever you have for me, God, I want it. I want to take hold of it. I want to be a person of faith. I want to be a person that obeys God. I really do. Like, I promise, Lord, you can trust me with your plans. I want to take hold of what you have. I want your promises. I want your favor. I want your blessing. I want to obey. I want all of that. And I'm telling him that on lap four. Okay, lap four, I am professing my undying loyalty and devotion to the Lord through obedience and faith. I want what he has for me. I want his will not my will, but your will. I surrender. I submit all the words, all the right words. I'm telling him all the things. This is on lap four. Then on lap five, the Lord speaks to me and he tells me to walk up to the house and knock on the door. Now the house was not far from this park, so it would not be too long of a run to get to this house and be able to knock on the door. But I didn't want to knock on the door, y'all. I had already knocked on the door weeks before feeling like a crazy person when the Lord told me to do that and go introduce myself and ask them if they'd ever thought about selling, which they weren't, by the way. So on lap four, I tell God I want to obey. On lap five, God tells me to walk up to the house and I'm like, no, 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 I don't, no, 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 not that, not that, I didn't mean that. Like, I've already done that, Lord. Why do I have to do it? Can I send him a text? Like, we, we exchange phone numbers. Can I just send him a text? Can I leave a note? Can I just not talk to him at all and you tell them to call me this time? Like, I am arguing and debating and negotiating anything but that. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. This is exactly what happens, doesn't it? We do the exact same thing. That's one example of many I have in my life when I have done this. And I'm willing to bet you've done the same thing. We pray and we tell God we want to obey. We want to listen. We want to be in his will. We want to do what he wants us to do. But then here's what happens. He tells us what he wants us to do. And we're like, no, not that. No, no, no. No, I didn't mean that. Not that thing. We don't want to do the thing he wants us to do because the thing he wants us to do is hard, y'all. It's hard. Can I tell you something? God is almost never going to ask you to do something easy for you. He's not. He's not going to ask you to give a little when you have a lot or be kind when you just so happen to already be in a good mood. No. 
He is going to ask you to do something that is hard, painful, maybe even excruciating for you. He is going to ask you to give a lot when you have nothing. He is going to ask you to be kind and forgive when someone has stabbed you in the back and they don't deserve it. He's going to ask you to let your enemy get credit for the hard work you put in. And he's going to ask you to do the thing you would never want to do. It will often be something that forces you to literally die to yourself, to your flesh, to your will, and to your wishes. It is going to be something that makes you look foolish or weak or crazy. It is going to be something that makes zero sense in the natural. But most of all, it's going to be something that you don't want to do. But I've got to tell you what you already know is coming, don't you? Do it anyway. Do it anyway. You said you wanted to obey, right? The very premise of the word obey is to comply, y'all, to do something you don't want to do. What did you think was going to happen when you prayed to obey? Did you think that God was going to ask you to go to the Bahamas for a week? Is that what you need to obey in? No, of course not. If you need to obey, then it's probably something you don't want to do. Something that is hard. It might not even make sense. It might be something that you don't even understand why you're doing it. So you argue and you're going, God, does this even matter? This doesn't make sense. Doesn't matter. He's asking you to obey. Think about the example of Ananias and Paul. God speaks to Ananias to go to Paul, which was Saul at the time, and tells him to speak to him that he's going to use him to spread the gospel. At this time, y'all, Saul was killing people, specifically Christians. He hated Christians. So imagine that you are Ananias and you don't know how the story unfolds. Imagine that you are him and God speaks to you and says, hey, go to this guy that's murdering Christians. I'm going to use him. Aren't you confused? That doesn't make sense. It's confusing. It's counterintuitive. It seems just plain wrong. It doesn't make sense. God is probably going to ask you to do something that does not make sense to you. Do it anyway. He might ask you to do something that seems crazy or that's going to make you look dumb or weird or whatever. Think about Noah and the ark. No sign of rain anyway. Hey, build this giant ark. Huge. Fit all the animals. I'm going to give you the plans. I'm going to show you exactly how big this thing is supposed to be. I'm going to tell you exactly how to do it. Can you imagine how crazy Noah looked? How foolish he looked? How dumb or weird he looked? Do you think that he only asked people in the Old Testament or the New Testament to do dumb, weird, crazy, foolish things? No, no, no. This is how he works, y'all. This is how he leads. He may ask you to do something that looks crazy or foolish. He may even ask you to do something that goes completely against the very promise or vision that he's given you. Now, I know this seems weird, but he does it. And we have a pattern in scripture that he's done it before. Think about the example of Abraham and Isaac. So God speaks to Abraham, tells him he's going to be the father of nations. There are going to be generations coming from Abraham, okay? Now, it takes a long time, takes a real long time for Abraham to actually have this child, Isaac, and then he has him. And then one day, out of nowhere, God says to Abraham, Abraham, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Notice that that's in scripture. Your only son, Isaac, whom you love. So God is not bypassing the fact that this is his only son. He's acknowledging it. So there are no other children that the generations could come from. He's also pointing out that Abraham loves him. He adores him. This is what God says. Take your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and take him up to Mount Moriah and sacrifice him there. Okay, like you talk about something that seems crazy, something that doesn't make sense. Not only that, y'all, this call, this command goes against the very promise he's given him. He said, you are going to have generations come through your line. Oh, by the way, sacrifice this child that I've told you generations are going to come from. The call goes against the very thing he's promised him, the very vision He's given him. Do you think he just did that for Abraham? He may do it for you. 
You may be there right now where God has given you a vision or a promise and everything is stacking up against it. Maybe even God is asking you to do something that completely goes against the promise or the vision. And you're trying to reconcile it, but you can't. You're trying to find the purpose and the the how and the when and the where and the the method and and how this is all going to work out. And you can't. There is no way that this works out in your mind. It makes no sense. Obey anyway. Obey anyway. You know, some of you are listening to this right now and you have something you know you're supposed to do. I don't know what it is, but you do. It's coming to your mind even now as I'm speaking. There is something that you're supposed to do. God has been nudging you to do, affirming you to do, confirming you to do, calling, compelling, commanding, convicting you to do, and you haven't done it. And you've not done it in the name of you're not sure it's from the Lord, or you've not done it because it's hard, or you've not done it because it doesn't make sense. All these examples I've given you today, it goes against the promise. You would look crazy. You're sure it doesn't matter. All of it. You're arguing and debating and negotiating just like I did on that run, just like I have done countless times since. And you know what you need to do. If you're honest, you know what you need to do in your spirit, but you don't want to do it. I got to tell you something. You are holding yourself back and you don't want to do it. Friend, you've got to do it. Pretend that you and I are over coffee and I'm grabbing you by the shoulders and giving you that direct, very intense Enneagram 8 eye contact. You have to do it. You have to do it. Whatever it is, God has a purpose in it for you. And you are missing out on what is on the other side of that act of obedience because you won't do it. I love how Oswald Chambers said, the tiniest fragment of obedience and heaven opens up and the profoundest truths of God are yours straight away. God will never reveal more truth about himself till you obey in what you know already. Friend, you're you're waiting for him to speak. You're waiting for him to provide. You're waiting for him to show up in some supernatural way. And I question if he will do it if you are sitting there in disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Do the thing you know you're supposed to do. I know it's hard. I know it doesn't make sense. I know that you feel crazy. I know, I know, I know, because I have been there so many times myself. I know. In fact, I'll share something really personal in real time, even as I record this. About a week ago, the Lord asked me to do something that made no sense. And I thought, okay, well, maybe this is starting to move things in this direction, the stuff with the house, which is still going on. Okay, maybe this is why he's doing it. So I obeyed. I did the thing he asked me to do, which made me look crazy for sure. Foolish, at least, if not just completely insane. And you know what happened as a result of my obedience? Nothing. Nothing. No movement, no house, no progress, no promise fulfilled, no prayer answered. There was nothing that happened as a result of my obedience. And I can sit here with complete peace knowing I did what I was supposed to do because I know what I was supposed to do. God's job is to fulfill it. God's job is to make the progress. God's job is to answer the prayers and fix the problems. That is God's job. My job is to obey and yours is too. Even when you don't understand, even when it's really hard, even when you look a little crazy and even when it doesn't turn out like you want or hope or expect immediately, you can trust that God knows what he's doing And he has a purpose in it, whether you can see it or not. Of course, it's going to be hard. Whether it's hard because it doesn't make sense, or it's hard because it seems crazy, or it's hard because it goes against the very thing he said, it is going to be hard. That is why he's asking you to obey. Because it's not something you would think to do on your own or want to do on your own. It requires obedience because it's hard. But remember what you said? You said you wanted to obey. So even when it's hard, even when it doesn't make sense, or even when it seems crazy or goes against what he said, do it anyway. Do it anyway. God never asks us to understand. He asks us to obey. So whatever it is that he's told you to do, even though it's hard, do it anyway. Do it anyway. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for joining me for Get Your Hopes Up. I love hanging out with you every Monday to help you get to know God, get closer to Him, and get your hopes up again. Be sure to share this episode on social media and tag me so other people can get their hopes up as well. And then follow the Christy Wright Podcast channel so you never miss a new show. 
And I'll see you next Monday for another new episode of Get Your Hopes Up.